Welcome back. I'm Michael Bull, and this is the Commercial Real Estate Show. If you'd like to know the absolute latest on any commercial real estate related topics, check out our on demand show podcast. For example, last week we covered the retail sector, and the week before we looked at the office market. There are lots of interesting shows to choose from. Just grab your phone, tablet, or computer and visit iTunes or the show website, commercialrealestateshow.com. Today we're talking about the U.S. multifamily market. We now have an expert panel here for you. Please welcome Alan Tappy, Senior Vice President with Grandbridge Capital, providing capital sources for clients across the country with a special expertise in the apartment industry. Alan, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Michael. Also, please welcome Brett Finkelstein, CEO, CF Lane, a top 50 national provider of multifamily management services, managing 30,000 units. Brett, thanks for joining us. Definitely. Great to be here. Appreciate it. And, uh, Brett, we just heard from Axio Metrics about the market improving overall, but but you're you're on the ground level there. You're controlling apartments uh, all over the country. You know, what do you see for rate growth and occupancy in your properties? Sure. The uh, occupancy levels over the last 24 months have been pretty strong across the board. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, the higher A-class stuff over the last two years has really, really strengthened. And it's basically to a point now where there's a lot of new product coming into the market and we might see some rate growth type kind of stabilize there but with the uh, B and C product we're seeing an escalation there um, I'd say in the range of three to five percent mainly across the board throughout most markets in the country okay yeah I, just to add to that one of the things we're seeing from some of our clients um, is, is a compression in the economic vacancy uh, physical vacant physical occupancies have improved but so have uh, economic so that you know that means um, you know bad debt and concessions are, are burning off somewhat. Um, so whereas you know maybe 12, 18, 24 months ago, physical occupancies were were in the mid 90s, but economic were in the you know, mid 80s. Uh, we're starting to see that that margin compress you know from a lot of our clients. And, so. and conceptually, how that works from an operator standpoint is when the market is down, we were able to continue to keep our occupancies in the mid 90s. But in order to do that, we offered concessions such as one month free or $300 off the first month rent. So the first thing that happens, and that happened a couple years ago, was we stopped offering those concessions, which obviously increased the economic occupancy of the properties. um, But we didn't have necessarily rent growth off the top line at that point. Now that the majority of those concessions have eroded, um, we're focusing pretty strong on top line rent growth and, and, and rate growth. Yeah, well, it's interesting. I think from uh, people that are not in the apartment industry, I think some of them are a bit surprised at uh, you know, the real growth in the multifamily market and that it looks like it's sustainable. So, so Brett, what do you see for, for potential tenant traffic at your communities right now? Are you having the same level of prospective tenants coming through that you've had in the last couple of years? Definitely, and we see it increasing. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely during the real high profile leasing seasons, which you know will be this summer, and also at the beginning of the year, you get a lot of activity. You know, everybody has New Year's resolutions. Everybody has you know things they want to do during the following year, and finding a new place to live is is usually on the uh, top of a lot of people's list. So, pretty much across the board, we've seen strengthening. Um, continuing into 2014, which have allowed us to push rent substantially. And this traffic, uh, has it adjusted any over the years or maybe from pre-recession as far as the demographics of the potential uh, tenant and the economic viability of, of the uh, tenants that are coming across your, your communities? Sure. The, the great thing is we're basically seeing growth in all areas. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people who came out of college in the last four or five years during the economic downturn. We're living with mom and dad. Mm-hmm. That's unwinding. Those people are really getting out into the the, uh, the uh, rental force. Um, you also have older people who might have sold their house, and in the past they might have bought a condo um, to retire, and we're seeing a lot of those people into the rental pool also. So across the board, we're seeing a, a big influx. Well, that's interesting, and I think it makes sense. Uh, you know, it's an ease of living, you know. When the refrigerator doesn't uh, work right in the morning, uh, instead of the wife yelling at you and having you having to deal with it, you just call Brett. Hey, fix the fridge, will you? It's also yeah. a mobility. You know, it, it, it yeah. gives mobility. Right. Everybody realizes now that, you know, 
the, the home is not a guaranteed investment. And if you need to move two, three, four years, or if you need to take a job in another city, uh, you want the flexibility. And, you know, I think that us as apartment operators, we're really reaping the benefit of a change in mentality and people want to have mobility. Yeah, that's a good point. And one of the things I think some uh, tenant shoppers are, are surprised to see when they come to these communities is the uh, use of the revenue management. So so they come in, the rent's different today and it's different tomorrow. Do you guys use revenue management systems at your communities? Yeah, many communities we do use that revenue um, management. Yeah, LRO is a, a big one that we use. Mm-hmm. Um, the reason that we do that is uh, property managers, in a lot of respects, are great at managing properties, but a lot of times they have relationships with these tenants. Um, and you like that. Yeah, we love that, but right. we want to take the human element out of what the rent selection is. So mm-hmm. we can set uh, occupancy that we like, and you know, it basically pushes the rents to the point for maximum return for our investors and our clients. Mm-hmm. So you know, we've had very good success with that, and it's really um, helped the performance on a lot of properties. We're a proponent of, of that. And you're also using it on uh, renewals, right? So the manager can't uh, adjust the renewal or keep a renewal rate down because they like that tenant. It's They've got to look at the computer. Well, the computer says this. Don't get mad at me. Exactly. Right. And it also gives the manager a reason to say, hey, it's not my fault. Right. And it is and it is based on market. Tell some of our listeners that, that may not be aware of revenue management system. What are they? What, what are you inputting? into those systems and what's coming from those systems that sets those rents? Are they looking at your turnkey cost? Are they looking at your unit mix? Are they looking at your other notices to move? Are they looking at occupancy in your competing properties? Yeah, it's it's basically kind of a global system that takes into consideration all the different unit mix that you have at the property, all the different floor plans. What's the occupancy, the average rental rate at each of those floor plans? What's the move in, move out schedule? Um, and what are the other competing properties in the area getting for their rent? So basically it takes that, all of that into consideration and you basically set it at a, a occupancy level that you want to achieve. Mm-hmm. So let's say that you want to achieve a 95% stabilized occupancy. If you're, at, if you're at 98% and you only have one of each available floor plan, obviously the system's going to increase that rate substantially probably to a point where nobody will lease it (laughs) until you know you have a couple move outs and it moves back to 95 percent but there is a human element to it so our managers um, at the regional manager and rvp level can monitor that and say hey obviously the average in place rent for the one bedroom at xyz community is a thousand bucks we're 98 percent occupancy the LRO is saying we should rent that for 1350 We know nobody's going to lease it, so they could back it down to 1100 which would still be an excess, but it wouldn't leave a gap of, you know, nobody leasing for a certain or nobody renewing for a certain amount of time. And, Alan, what about underwriters um, looking at apartment communities that use revenue management? From what I understand, uh, communities that use revenue management are performing a little better. Uh, mm-hmm. Do underwriters take that into account, and do, they, do you see that at all? Oh, absolutely, um, especially – in the environment, you know, post Great Recession, um, the it was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I mean, I mean, now more than ever, the the organization um, of of your of your numbers, especially on the revenue side, is more important than ever. Being able to show us um, all the elements that are above the line from from bad debt concessions, rent, what you're trying to achieve, and, wh- and what what you are achieving. We we definitely want to look at effective rents, but I think now. Um, as, as we as we're coming out and as we've come out of this recession we want to see an operator um, that that knows what they're doing and, and these revenue management systems um, are, are a big part of that for an underwriter um, we, we we see all kinds I mean I've, I've underwritten uh, deals off of handwritten rent rolls so um, all nice right we're gonna take a quick break here more on the apartment industry this is the commercial real estate show we'll be right back The Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you in part by your friends at Bull Realty. When your business requires proven performance, visit bullrealty.com or call 800-408-BULL. Welcome back. I'm Michael Bull, and this is the Commercial Real Estate Show. We have some great shows coming up for you, including separate shows on the industrial sector and hospitality markets. Be sure to catch topics of special interest to you. Sign up for a -a once-a-week email announcing the show topic at commercialrealestateshow.com. Well, today we're discussing the multifamily industry. My guests are Alan Tappy and Brett Finkelstein with CF Lane, and Alan's with Grandbridge Capital. And uh, Brett, uh, 
again, you're you're on the firing line. You're down there running these properties. What do you expect for rate growth and occupancy growth, or do you expect it to grow, continue to grow in 2014 and moving on forward? Yeah, most occupancies are pretty much at full capacity, which we would consider 95% or better. Obviously, a 95% occupancy is a full occupancy. The other is move-ins and move-outs. So most properties are experiencing those occupancy levels or better, which is obviously a prime time to continue to push rental rates and rental growth. So we see in 2014 to be able to continue to do that to the tune of 3 to 5% in most markets. Um, we do have some markets that are some of the more volatile Sunbelt markets, where we're able to push rents a little stronger because rents decline more during the downturn. Um, but across the board, 3 to 5% is, is a good measure, and that's usually where we're sending out renewal notices. Okay. And what about the, between the different classes of A and B? You know, what do you expect for rent growth and uh, occupancy growth there? Um, we're seeing some moderating at the top end, which mm-hmm. I would call the A and the double A, mm-hmm. which was the first to recover. Um, we're also seeing new supply come into a lot of markets. Um, obviously, new supply is, is always A or AA product. So um, some of the existing higher-end product is going to see some tippering of rent growth. You know, it could be towards the lower end, such as 3%. Um, we are seeing some markets where there is some negative rent growth, where there's a lot of supply coming on, um, such as uh, some of the Metro DC markets, um, Raleigh-Durham, et cetera. And it, all, it always depends on where the property is located and what else is in that submarket. Um, but the BNC product, which is more of the workforce type housing, we're seeing really, really strong rent growth there as the the unemployment continues to decline um, from the, the Great Recession. Um, those tenants are looking for housing, and obviously they have the ability to pay more in rent. So there's more demand there, which is driving up rental rates. And Alan, the underwriters, especially the CMBS and ins- insurance uh, companies, you know, how do they, they look at uh, the market moving forward? Are, are some of them a little more skittish in some of these cities about the new supply coming on and the continued growth mm-hmm. and, and strength of the market? I, I think they are being more careful. I think, you know, Brett mentioned the A and AA class um, in areas where there's, there's new units coming online. Um, I wouldn't say that they're being skittish. I said I would say that it's, it's more of just being a little more careful. Uh, trying to be more prudent in the underwriting with regards to rent growth and occupancy. Um, I, th- I think we're going into 2014, what, what we're seeing from, from a lot of our clients is, is more of a leveling off <clears throat> in that class of, uh, of, of product for, from an occupancy standpoint. Um, rent growth moderating, but we, we're a, we're a mid, you know, mid-market company, so we do a lot of business in, in the Midwest and Sun Belt and, mm-hmm. and some of these uh, smaller markets. And, and I think uh, we are seeing rent growth, um, and we expect to, that that to continue, three to five percent in those areas. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think the the institutional investment capital is is following that rent growth. We've seen them move into some of those markets, and and um, I, I don't I don't think our underwriters are being skittish at all. I, I think they are just being more careful in certain areas, but understanding mm-hmm. that that the, um, the the positive news and, and and the positive movement in economics for multifamily has spread. Uh, further out than than just Class A, and it's still the easiest sector to get financing, right? It is, thanks to Uncle Sam. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's um, you know, Fannie and Freddie are, are still going strong, and um, you know, there's you, depending on what you read in the news and where they're going to go. All we know is today they they have a very <laughs> strong platform, and it's it's very active. So um, there's a lot more capital out there for multifamily. Okay, and one of the things I think some people consider that could could uh, impact the apartment market is the residential market coming back, uh, homes starting to improve in value, interest rates still low. Do you guys do exit polls on your tenants, Brett, when they move out? And, and what do you hear? Are How many of those tenants that are moving out are buying? And is that percentage of, of tenants buying, you know, surprise you? Or, or what do you expect? To see? You know, we're still not seeing a we, – we have reports that we get that says the reason for the move out. Um, and across the board, there are some properties in some locations that we do see a decent amount of people moving out to buy homes or condos, but still across the board, that's very, very small percentage. I think uh, the mobility of tenants is more important to them today in today's environment, and home purchases are not on the top of the list. The other thing is the down payment requirements mm-hmm. and just the loan processing and the stringent nature of all the new laws and requirements that the lenders have to uh, comply with kind of turns a lot of people off. So we're not seeing that as a, a huge 
force that's dragging tenants out of the rental market. I see. And when you're looking to build or, or acquire an A property, um, do you look at the housing cost around there to, to get an idea? I mean, if the housing cost is, is really high, I assume that would be a plus for that community, right? A hundred percent. You know, when we acquire or develop, we want to be in locations which we think have bona fide long-term fundamentals. More on the apartment market. We'll be right back. The Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you in part by France Media. France Media provides exposure to the world of commercial real estate. Visit francemediainc.com or call 404-832-8262. Welcome back. I'm Michael Bull, and this is the Commercial Real Estate Show. Well, if you listen to the show online or you listen on uh, one of the 12 radio stations around the country, you're invited to check out the Commercial Real Estate Show videos on YouTube. Uh, you'll find a great selection of videos like Reese on Real Estate and the Fed's view on commercial real estate. You're invited to subscribe so you don't miss a show of special interest to you. Just visit YouTube and search for the channel Commercial Real Estate Show. Well, today we're discussing the multifamily industry with Alan Tappy and Brett Finkelstein. And, and Brett, one of the things that uh, I think are interesting to apartment owners and managers and asset managers around the country are, are management situations and challenges and ways to keep tenants and, and overcome some of the challenges that we, you're still going to have in this community, uh, in this industry. What are some of the challenges in the apartment industry? It's not all rosy, right? There's some challenges you still have to overcome. Of course. You, yeah. you know, just like businesses that are people businesses the apartment business is mm -hmm. a, a people business mm -hmm. um, from a management standpoint of the staffing and from the people who actually live there and obviously people expect a lot out of where they live and there's a lot of uh, expectations for um, how properties are run so obviously the from an occupancy and a rent growth you know it's all rosy all the headlines are fantastic but when you get down to the nitty-gritty you still have to operate the property and deal with people so you know those are always the biggest challenges to make sure that you have the proper staff on site you have the the proper um, execution if the tenants are happy because when you have happy tenants you have low turnover you're able to grow your rents and you have very happy clients and investors so we really focus on client retention client satisfaction try to drive that down through our management operation. And do you have any challenges from the municipalities uh, around your communities as far as what they expect for, for taxes and for code and that sort of thing? Sure, you know, that that's ongoing and we're an institutional management company, mm -hmm. so the properties that we own and operate for third parties, um, we keep everything up to code in impeccable condition mm -hmm. and work with our owners and investors to make sure um, their properties are at that level. And we keep very good relationships with uh, the local code enforcement people, et cetera, because we want to comply because, you know, having a well-run property is a, it's a um, attribute to the community and that's what we want to bring. Okay. And the advertising market, the, the uh, promoting your properties, I guess has changed uh, over the years. I remember back in the day, you just, you put an ad in the, in the paper newspaper, right? What are you guys doing to attract uh, more tenants today to your communities? It's, it's all social media, online, internet, you know, the day of going to the grocery store and picking up the manual and flipping through it. Um, you know, those days are coming to an end. We have a more of an informed tenant base. They want to check out online what they're getting before they even come out. They want to see the interiors. They want to see what the community looks like. They want to read the reviews. So, you know, we spend a lot of time, um, what we call kind of internet management, maybe making sure that um, the properties are portrayed in the right way, because that's where the tenants are coming from. And these tenants, uh, one thing I'm curious about with the changing in the economic times are your um, ra ra ratios between a tenant's income and your rent. I mean, is uh, I'm back in the days to manage apartments many, many years ago, and we used kind of 25% if their rent was more than 25% of their take home, we were a little concerned. You know, wh what do you see out there communities for the, for that? You know, I think across the board, it's, it's now about three times mm -hmm. is where the minimum standards are. But uh, obviously, uh, the majority of the communities are, are far in excess of that, especially with the strengthening of the rental pool and the strengthening of the, uh, the type of person that's renting today. Mm -hmm. You know, we're seeing a lot of communities that might have uh, rent to income ratios of four or five times, mm -hmm. which, is, which is ideal, but three is, is basically the minimum. And do you adjust that as well when, uh, with your communities, or is that pretty set? 
in, in stone. It doesn't change depending on occupancy. Or, it's interesting, and it just kind of goes back to general philosophy on people. Mm-hmm. What we see, and we have our property management software, we can pull what the average rental income ratio is for anybody in a, in a property. And, you know, usually people live to their means, which is, which is pretty interesting. So um, you don't really raise or lower that. If people meet the minimum standards and they have a clean rental history and a clean credit history, then you know, then then you know that's a tenant that is that is accepted. And I, I know you have better tenants than you did back in the day when the uh, residents could get a home loan with a breath test, a mirror test, right? Mm-hmm. And they were all re- uh, going and buying houses. Uh, uh, so now you've probably got more qualified tenants. And uh, you talked about retention and keeping tenants. I know in, in some communities, things like the, the internet and, and the, uh, the pipe there is important. What, what are you guys seeing is important for retention? I mean, when you, when you retain tenants, obviously that's fantastic. What are you doing to do that? Um, the biggest thing with the apartment industry now, these tenants want a lifestyle. So, you know, we've spent a lot of time and a lot of money in upgrading many communities to give, to give things that people want. You know, pets are extremely important. You know, most all communities we have area will install dog parks, make them pet friendly. You know, some communities we bring in tennis instructors. Some communities we bring in healthcare professionals who teach classes two or three days a week. So we want to make it more of a lifestyle choice, um, and that that goes a long way to retain residents. And we have, you know, we have after school programs at a lot of communities um, where there's a lot of kids. So we try to tailor our amenities and our management style to what the demographic and the, the, the residents in that community really want. And we've been really successful doing that, and that, that cuts down on your um, delinquency and it cuts down on your, um, your, um, your move-outs. So it's not just a swimming pool and a clubhouse with a pool table anymore, right? No, we, we toured a property <laughs> last week that had an indoor dog wash um, that I first first one I've seen and, and uh, to Brett's point I mean you've, you've got a lot of people looking to find that little edge on their amenity package um, you know for, for, for the demographic that might rent in town that you know that may or may not have a dog a lot more do or a pet well this this was a it, it was a I guess a waist high uh, dog wash inside and uh, it, was, it was real real neat but little things like that are gonna gonna separate uh, properties from each other from well, that's good and I, I thought my tub was an indoor dog <laughs> <laughs> well stay tuned we'll have more on the apartment industry i'm michael bull this is the commercial real estate show we'll be right back the commercial real estate show is brought to you in part by your friends at bull realty when your business requires proven performance visit bullrealty.com or call 800-408-BULL Welcome back. I'm Michael Bull, and this is the Commercial Real Estate Show. We're excited to announce a new service on the show. It's called Ask Michael Bull. Every business day, I answer a listener's question on video. You can check it out at the Twitter account, Ask Michael Bull, or on the YouTube channel, Commercial Real Estate Show. Today, we're discussing the multifamily market with Alan Tappy and Brett Finkelstein. And, Brett, one of the things that, uh, well, Alan, let me start with you on financing right now. What do you see for rates and, and loan to value and underwriting in the apartment industry today? Well, well for rates, um, over the course of 2014, we're kind of looking for um, you know, maybe a, a, a 475 to five and a quarter uh, with a little bit of upward pressure in there. And, and, and a lot of it obviously has to do with, with the indexes. Um, you know, the T-bills in the short term have gone down. So, so we're we're, we're calling for short for for rates to stay low in the short term here the bottom of that range uh, the tapering seems to be built into those indexes um, but but we do think there's still if, if the economy continues to improve there's upward pressure on the on treasuries um, on the spread side the investor spread those have been coming in so that could offset some increase in treasuries so that's why we think that that the overall note rates for for long-term debt are going to stay in that uh, in that 50 basis point range okay so can i get a three percent loan 90 percent loan to value right uh <laughs> I well can't if, get if this was 2006 you know 2005 maybe but well it's a good point that you know loan to value um we're start we are starting to see the higher higher leverage uh, piece of the capital stack come back into the fray such as mezzanine financing um so we are we are seeing 85 percent deals get done with an a and b piece 
And um, I, I think um, over the course of, of the first quarter, we'll, we'll start to get uh, more and more of that in and um, more and more aggressive uh, from what we're seeing. So, but by and large, your first mortgages are still in that 75 to 80 percent. Okay. And, and Brett, this seems like a, still a good time to, to buy communities right now with uh, the forecast that we see. Are you guys an active buyer in 2014 and moving forward? We are. We, we've been extremely active over the last two or three years. And, you know, we see our volume increasing this year, really focusing on areas. Construction costs has in, increased substantially. Uh, land prices have increased substantially. So the cost to build new product in some high-end areas is very high. So we see a lot of opportunity in upgrading older product. Um, and we've been very successful in buying these in, in very um, high-end areas and areas that are walkable where tenants want to live, improving the box, improving the interiors. So I think we will uh, see a lot of activity in 2014 along those lines. Okay. Well, if a listener has some uh, apartment community out there in the U.S. somewhere, what is your criterion? Uh, we want to be in areas with strong job growth because obviously that brings more tenants to the area. Mm -hmm. And we want them in areas where salaries elevate, mm -hmm. um, meaning as the economy continues to improve, people in these locations are earning more money, which means they can pay more rent. Mm -hmm. um, we're also looking areas that have some sort of supply constraint where municipalities don't want new apartments or the cost to build or the cost of land prices out a lot of new construction. So we have some sort of supply constraint where we don't have new competition coming in. Um, so that's kind of kind of our criteria and it kind of meshes back and forth between between those areas and what we view important in a certain area. All right, our fun has to end here. Can you give us a quick tip for our listeners, Al? Well, from the financing side, um, I would my, my recommendation would be to do your best to find the the longest term you can get to fix your rate to take out that variable, but also can you know combine that with some flexibility if you can, and, and those can be difficult to do together. But um, that would be the sweet spot: is long-term rate and flexibility in your loan to get out if you need to. Well so. said. Quick tip, Brett. Um, you know, I just think it's going to be a fun time mm -hmm. in the next five years. We're coming out of a huge downturn, and I think it's going to be a good time for the apartment industry, and there's just going to be a lot of opportunity. Well, gentlemen, thanks for joining us today. We appreciate it. Thanks, Fantastic. Mark. Thank you. Well, for more information from myself or our guest, all our contact information is available at the show website, commercialrealestateshow.com. And I have a question for you as a listener. Can you join us next week? Well, I hope so. We'll be talking about the industrial market. Until next week, be sure that you always lead, learn, and laugh, and join us for the Commercial Real Estate Show. The Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you by Atlanta Office Liquidators, new and used furniture liquidators, France Media, publications and conferences, and Bull Realty Commercial Brokerage, a great place to do business. For more information on these companies or to access additional podcasts, videos, or blogs, visit commercialrealestateshow.com.